earlier we have seen that how cost of debt and cost of preferred stock can be determined now it's time to learn that how cost of common equity can be determined by cost of common a uh, common equity we mean the rate of return required by a company's common stockholders over holding of its equity instruments a company can raise common equity in two different ways like through flowing back of its retained earnings this means that retained earnings are reinvested in the business of the company or a firm can raise its equity through the new issue now to determine cost of equity certain approaches can be used by a financial analyst like a capital assets pricing model or capm to dividend discount model pre bond yield plus risk premium can be used first approach is capital asset pricing model or the capm in fact in capm uh, the model works as that the required rate of return on a particular project with reference to the cost of equity is basically the sum of risk free rate and the premium for bearing the stock market risk now what these terms are if we see the cap model the first term on the left hand side is the required rate of return or the r bar then we have in the right hand side the first term as rf or the risk free rate then we have beta beta in fact the measure or variable that measures the responsiveness of a particular stock with reference to variation in the prices of the stock market then we have rm that is the return on market portfolio or it is the market return uh what a risk free rate is in this cap model by risk free rate we means uh a rate that is earned on a risk free asset and by risk free asset we mean an asset that has no default risk option to proxy risk free rate we generally yield uh, we generally use yield on a uh, default free government debt instruments that has similar duration of the project cash flows let's take uh, if we are working in pakistan and we want to determine the risk free rate then we can use the uh, t bills rate as a proxy for the risk free rate now the difference between market return and the risk free rate is the equity risk premium uh, which is demanded by any investor for investing in the risky market portfolio so that is the uh, market risk premium which is in fact demanded by a rational investor over and above the risk free rate in a market now how to determine erp or equity risk premium there are certain approaches the first approach is the historical erp in historical erp it is assumed that the realized erp observed over a longer period of time or the historical risk premium is a good measure uh, or indicator to determine an expected risk premium this means that we are using historical equity risk premium to compute the expected risk premium for the future uh using the historical data we determine an average rate of return on the market portfolio and the risk risk free rate in the country uh, i is then determined this means that using these historical returns on the market portfolio we are determining the market return or rm and using the historical uh uh yield yields on t bills we are determining the risk free rate 
uh, how to determine this ERP these ERPs can be determined using average or arithmetic means or these ERPs can also be determined using geometric means let's take an example to determine risk free rate using the arithmetic mean we see that in the example we have t bonds data over the past 100 years that an average is 5.4 percent the arithmetic mean on market observed or rm is the 9.3 percent now if we need to determine the equity risk premium we need to determine uh, take the difference between market return which is 9.3 percent and risk free rate which is 5.4 so deducting 5.4 percent from 9.3 percent comes to 3.9 percent and this is the equity risk premium that we determine using the arithmetic averages or arithmetic means we can use also uh, historical geometric means uh, in this example example 2 the historical geometric mean for us equity of 4.8 percent to value citibank as of early june january 2006 so this is basically the uh, market return rm according to the standard and poor citibank had a beta that is the beta of this citibank or particular entity which is 1.32 using the 10 years us treasury bond yield of 4.38 percent to represent the risk free rate so this is the rf which is 4.3 percent if we determine cost of equity then we add this risk free rate to the risk premium which is 4.8 percent and the cost of equity is 10.72 percent so we can use both arithmetic mean and geometric mean to determine either the market return or the risk free rate to determine the cost of equity the second approach that can be used to determine cost of equity is the dividend discount model a uh, dividend discount model that was uh, delivered by the famous gordon uh, which is also known as gordon growth model it assumes a long term growth trend in the firm's earning because the model is based on firm's earning and it uses the relationship between the value of an index expected dividend and a constant growth in the corporate dividends so when we develop a relationship between these variables we develop a model in which current price or p0 is equal to the dividend divided by r e minus g here g is the growth rate of dividend r e is the return on return on equity or the cost of equity d1 is the next period dividend and p0 is the current market price of the stock if we uh, rearrange this particular equation to determine r e then r is equal to d1 plus d1 divided by p0 and this is basically the dividend yield plus the g g is the growth rate so r e basically then is equal to the sum of dividend yield plus the dividend growth rate therefore we can say that the erb or equity risk premium is basically the difference between rm and rf that we are producing here the third approach that is used to determine equity risk premium is the survey approach in fact we get a survey on uh, this equity risk premium from different financial experts and then we uh, make an average of these opinions and this average value is then used as the equity risk premium for determining the cost of equity the second model that can be used to determine a cost of equity is the dividend discount model or the gordon growth model it can be directly used to obtain an estimate of the cost of equity earlier you, we used this model to determine the equity risk premium but this model can also be used to direct determine the cost of equity in fact this dividend discount model states that intrinsic value of the stock is basically the present value of its expected dividend this means that uh, this model determines 
a rate of return at which the present value of the future dividend becomes equal to the current market price of the uh, company's stock uh, this gordon growth model or dividend discount model assumes expected dividends to grow at a constant rate at a fixed rate throughout the life of the company because it is an infinity equity instrument so we also uh, assume that prices in fact reflect the intrinsic value of the particular stock this means that value of the firm is equal to the current market price of its stock now to determine re we have to rearrange the dividend discount model which is basically p not is equal to d1 divided by re minus g in fact this is, we need to determine re then we solve re through dividing the expected dividend over the current price and adding the growth to this figure this means again that the cost of equity or required rate of return on equity is the sum of dividend yield and the growth rate uh, but here in this particular case the g does not mean the growth rate in the dividend in fact here g is the uh, 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 growth in the company's earnings this is earnings growth rate uh, to estimate this g is a little challenging uh, because uh, it is not as simple we have two different ways to determine this g the first is to get the value of this g from the published sources of the firm or it may be get, uh, obtained from certain vendors or financial uh, analyst firms or it may be developed through building a relationship between the g uh, which is the retention rate in fact so it g here is the retention rate that the rate at which the firm is retaining its retain earning for its internal growth and in fact this g is basically the sustainable growth rate and to determine this sustainable growth rate or g we need to uh, divide the retained earnings over the company's overall earnings and then multiply this retention ratio with the return on equity so if we multiply return on equity with the retention ratio of the firm the resulting figure is the sustainable growth rate the rate at which internally firm can grow firm can grow at its internal financing and adding this g to the dividend yield gives the figure of a uh, cost of equity or re the third approach that can be used to determine a uh, cost of equity is the bond yield plus risk premium approach in this approach we assume that cost of capital of riskier cash flows is higher than that of a lesser riskier cash flows higher the riskiness of a cash flow higher is the cost of capital we use a risk premium that basically captures the additional yield on a company's stock in relation to its bonds this means that uh, we determine the cost of equity through the summation of the company's cost of debt plus the risk premium in relation to its debt riskiness this means that we can uh, determine the risk premium using historical spread between the bond yield and the stock yield of a particular corporate firm